Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting 208, halfway through March. Uh, my kids go both are now back in school, so that's kind of an interesting time. Uh, hope you guys are doing well. I had to jog all the way back. As always, this meeting is recorded for those of you that are not with us right here, right now, but watching us later. What are we doing? Uh, if you're here, say hi. We'd love to see you. I know Jacob said hi a little bit ago. Um, always happy to have Jacob. A few other people watching, say hi. We'd love to know who's here. We'll do triage like we always do, and then we'll do a couple more Wix 4 design discussions, which is a much shorter list, um, but we've added to it, so I guess that's just kind of the way it goes. Um, and then we'll do questions, comments, anything else anybody else wants to talk about. Uh, Bob, you ready to go do triage? More or less. More or less. All right. I'll take it. Um, oh, whoops. I'm supposed to set. Man, I'm not ready for triage. Uh, push the right buttons. All right. And then I'm supposed to sort oldest first. Okay, great. Um, Sean, I think yes. you reopened this. You want to talk so about? Oh. This was the whip we discussed. Well, I had it for one issue last time, but it was kind of addressing two issues. Ah. So are we suspending this issue since we decided not to do it or declining or what? Remind which part it provide a way for burn to recover from a hack package cache. So this is the part where I said when a bundle installs, it'll put its hash into the uninstall key. Uh, it, and yep. then you would be able to add the download URL when you author a package, which lets later bundles restore you if you go missing. Right. But you're interested in doing that right now, so it goes off into uh, four acts. Well, we, it sounded like we um, agreed last time that we didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do much more than, yeah, we want to do the minimum, right? Right, right, right. Um, yeah, I guess we just put it in four acts and suspend it, and we have a, uh, we need to go do a sweep of all the things that are suspended at some point. Um, basically apply the new world order to them, whatever we finally decided that Bob was going off and doing research into all the other worlds and coming back and telling us the way we should handle respawn point issues. Yeah, um, actually entirely separate from that, um, I'd like to not suspend this. Oh, okay. You want to look I at mean, this whip? I opened it, so I should... Ah. Maybe do some more due diligence. All right, we can hold it for another couple of weeks if that's what you want to do. Uh, no, no, I don't. Let's move to 4x. Okay, and not suspend um, it. And just not suspend it. I assigned it to myself. I'll. Uh... I don't have a problem with that, Sean. Oh yeah, I just yep. wanted out of four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not yeah do exactly. It. Yep. Yeah, right it's, right it's, I, I don't think it's a it's something we can reasonably do in 4.0, and I don't think it's that big a deal. But I, I've I opened the bug. It, it's you know it happens uh, with real people, and it'd be interesting to see if we can you know uh, work around the registry cleaners of the world. Right. All right. Burn does not repair an MSI when slipstreamed with a minor update patch. Right. This is yep the... yep still in my queue. Oh, okay. Fine, I will. I, I've done that more than a couple weeks. I have no problem with yep. that. Patch seems to include. Oh. Yep. Also in my queue. All right. Um, burn can wrongly detect MSI package as obsolete. So this is from our discussion last week. I was About trying to figure only. out what's still broken, and this is the only case that I can figure out. Ah, okay. So if you know of it, any other scenarios, then you know, please create an issue. But this. And the last one that I could find. Burn detects, except the, except the non-detect, oh, non-detect only rows in the upgrade table doesn't exist, so all three are detect only. Okay, so burn detects for related operations, non-detect MSI packages absent. Which is right. It's the. It's just a random. Upgrade code. Right. Right. This is the scenario where, where a package is upgrading multiple um oh wait no no this is no no this is just product search yeah right 
This is product search. Today. Yeah. Well, this is, you're searching for your upgrade code. And for some reason you have, uh, yeah, I guess it's product search. But you're searching for your upgrade code and that range includes your version for some reason. Oh, I read the expected as the actual. Okay, let me read the actual. Burn detects related operation as downgrade. Yep, and size and size package is obsolete. Yep. But you've oh, refined but this in V4 to handle the non-same upgrade code. Detect, handle detect only that are not the same upgrade code. Um, right, and that's the improvement. Yeah, I, I did that a long time ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that I think is the 90% case. Um, this one where you're basically detecting the previous version and then still installing but not removing it but using the same upgrade code yeah that i i feel like this can slide and basically be out there is like yeah we don't detect this properly don't well, do this scenario i mean for this can't we simply compare our version against the version of the msi we just detected and if it's less, then it's a downgrade, and if it's above, then it's our version being the MSI version, or the yes, the package that we're detecting right now. Basically, re-implement detect MSI detection. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we could. Maybe that works. Off the top of my head. I don't have any reason why it wouldn't work if we can thread the needle on it, yeah. I mean, that should be simple. All right, well, I, by as long as it's the right thing to do. <laughs> if you're, you have a detect only, we know if they're detect only, but we don't know, oh, no, but the problem is we don't know if they're if you detect an older version, what's the scenario? You're using this to find older versions of yourself, but you're not going to block. No, newer versions of yourself. You're finding newer versions of yourself, but you're still going to let the, MS, the MSI install. Right? Yeah. Oh, wait, is this newer or or is, it, uh, is this newer uh, based on the fact that MSI only looks at the, the first three fields of the version. Well, you have to do that too, but but it's it's newer. It's like, all right, so I have a bundle that is installing V100 of an MSI, and for some reason, V2 of the MSI is already on the machine. And this particular MSI is designed to allow you to install both V1 and V2, but V1 will detect its older or newer, younger, whatever, the newer the, versions, new. it'll detect its newer versions and write a reg key. I don't know what it would do, right? I, this is this is not a scenario I've ever seen in the real world where you're like, I want to allow V1 and V2 to install side by side and have V1 detect that V2 is, pr any newer version is present or any set of things is present and then, and essentially that, it's like I want to be able to detect and what you do with that a little, I'm uncertain. Like maybe the MSI has UI that conditionally tells the user, hey, by the way, you know, because the newer version of this is already installed, we will turn off these features automatically. But you can still install this MSI. Um, where normally you, that scenario would be, hey, we have a launch condition that detects that, you know, newer version is installed and we just block the whole install. That's the most common case. The rarer case is you do a detect only, but you don't do anything with that information to block your install. And I don't know how you can tell the difference between those two things without interpreting the semantics of the launch condition tables or an error table, you know, things like that. Any number of things, a custom action, you know, it's just, I don't know how you can say, I detected a newer version and it's not a downgrade. How did you see that working, Sean? Well, uh, take the version of the package that you're detecting and compare that to the version of the product you just detected. Yeah. 
You'll be able and to if... tell whether this detect only line is true, or I mean, whether the property would be set or not. But then so you, have... you know whether it's an upgrade. You know whether it's detect only. Right. But you don't know what they're using that detect only for. Yeah, I, I've seen this in cases where where an upgrade needs to be blocked um, because of some you know servicing bug, component rule violation, or whatever that that prevents a clean upgrade from particular versions of the package. So these end up being you know being uh, you know canceled via you know launch condition or something. Yeah, if you have the same upgrade code, it, it, the case is generally, hey, I detected somebody in my same upgrade code. If they're newer, generally the behavior is um, I block. I mean, I guess maybe we should have clicked onto the bug because the range <laughs> can the range can be however big it is. Yeah. So like. The range could be like one to three. Yep. You detected 1.5. Your version two. Oh, so, oh, so if you want to say that the range doesn't match, or it doesn't actually fall in the range, okay, that I see. So right now, okay, okay. So right now we're just saying, hey, the version's higher, so we're going to declare it downgrade. And obsolete, market obsolete. Um, you're saying, well, but at, technically speaking, that detector only row did not apply, so it shouldn't do anything to it. I don't. I think we're already filtering by the range. Okay, good. I would hope so, because that, that would definitely be a bug. And we should be able to do that. I guess what I'm trying to say is your current version can be inside of the range oh your current version could be oh okay so someone's blocking themselves so we're blocking themselves oh that okay yeah that's kind of funny <laughs> okay i understand now why you're saying we can compare against the package version i see so if the package itself if the new package is going to fall in the range is that the scenario yeah right then, okay, yeah, that one, fine. We, you're right, that we could handle. Got it, yes, you're right. That, okay, I'll buy that one. <laughs> um, we don't find a different MSI. We find ourselves in that range. Well, no, you're not finding yourself, but your version lies inside the range. Yeah. So that product that you're detecting on the machine could be less than you, or it could be greater than you. So if that version that you just detected on the machine is less than you, there's no way you're downgrading that product. Okay. But you're also not upgrading it. Right. So the, the scenario that is interesting in this is you could write an upgrade table that essentially says um, block if there's another version of me on this machine doesn't for whatever reason you don't your MSI does not support upgrades right so newer or older doesn't matter the user has to manually uninstall and install right this is this is kind of the pathological case but it's the easiest one to get into the scenario that I don't know how to get out of the great I have said that I have detected all of the MSIs in my range or in my upgrade code, and I will put a launch condition that says you must remove this, you know, product A before you can install version X of product A. And there's no way of knowing how to handle that scenario. Now, I don't know that I've seen that one in the wild before. Well. I I have, and the problem is th th this is happening when people have these blocks in their MSIs and then create a bundle. Because, right. yeah, well, first of all, 
there's nothing wrong with having the the MSIs also do that blocking behavior. It's you know belt and suspenders. Um, but where it really matters is in the bundle. You want the bundle to detect that and and warn you know slash fail um, before they even try. Yeah, so it, it's, but in that case, it's a product search, right? So I mean, that's the way to solve that problem in the bundle. Um, yeah, yeah, no, 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 I, I agree, I agree, and that's that's where, um, you know, you can argue if you have something like this in your MSI, you ought to also include it in your bundle, so you don't get into the position where, you know, the the detection is wonky. And if you act, you know if you actually applied, it might not be great. Yeah, so I think, we could I say think Brian's trying to do too much here. Well, that's entirely. I think that's true. Um, you could certainly say that we will only. We could change Burns' behavior from if we do a detect only, we treat it as something that's going to make us obsolete. To if we detect a detect only and the version we find is less than ours, then we will say it's a downgrade, or greater than ours, sorry. And we find that it's greater than ours, we will declare that as a downgrade. Right? Right. And if it's less than ours, that means that we're okay and we can, we're can. we basically creating a product that's installed side by side. Right. But it means that side by side only works when you're installing over newer ones, but not when you're installing over not when you install and there's a it only works if you are the newer version if you're installing a bundle that's the older version the msi will get skipped in that case because we'll be like oh there's a side-by-side -side msi here but it has a higher version so we've decided to kick in our downgrade rules and obsolete that msi which is technically wrong for that msi because it's side by side but we can't tell that because there's nothing that says that with detect only alone is this side by side or are you, you using this to detect um, downgrade only I mean, the real way to do this is add more information to the MSI that tells us, is this used for downgrade? But I don't know that we want to plumb all that through, and it certainly won't work for MSIs that people don't have control over, and you know, it just kind of gets back in the same problem. Probably have to end up overwriting at the MSI package element level inside the bundle. Well, I mean, I'd agree that's the right place for it anyway. In a way, we're you know we're harvesting this data from the MSI yep. to provide data that would otherwise be you know attributes on MSI package. You're absolutely right. Well, so it would be the yes, allow me to override the behavior that's inside the default yep. behavior. Um, so I'm not against the change that you're proposing, Sean, I'm just worried that people that have side-by-side -side MSIs might be surprised when it works in one case when they have a, a newer bundle, but doesn't work when they're installing their older bundle side-by-side. -side. Is it normal for people to detect the world like that? Because if they're not trying to detect themselves, they wouldn't run into this problem. That's correct. I don't but know how often needing to detect side by side. problematic. The, the problem is people <laughs> people are using the upgrade table for product searches. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, the, partly that's our fault because we actually have a product search element that fits all the other app search elements that just puts rows in the upgrade table. Yeah. Because yeah. that's how you do it. That's exactly how you do it. But you know we're trying we're trying to create semantics from the upgrade table that you know it's challenging to uh, uh, interpret. So I, I think Sean's change from a long time ago has solved honestly the ninety percent case. This is a much yeah. lesser case. So I'm part of me is kind of like ah we could, I could go either way on this. Essentially, Sean's like yeah we could be a little smarter. Clearly, we're not going to mark you down grade if our version's newer and it works that way. And we will mark a downgrade when the version on the machine is um, is newer already, then you're like, okay, great. That that's, At least you can stand by that and go, well, I guess that makes sense. And then the 
we either add more data to the MSI package element to override the, uh, the uh, evaluation of those upgrade codes, or they have to write something in their BA, right? Their BA could win in the end, though, right? Yeah. So, so I guess an alternate solution for this scenario that I have here is if all of the rows in the upgrade table are detect only, then never say it's a downgrade. I don't know that that's true. Well, how can you, how could it be a downgrade if the MSI is never going to upgrade anything? Because they just block. They don't do automatic upgrades. They didn't want to do the work to uh, make upgrades work inside the MSI. Dialing on install, things like that. But then it's not an MSI downgrade, it's a de facto downgrade. <laughs> right, they're just blocking all out because of it. They just block upgrades and downgrades with it. They, they, they block downgrades and upgrades. That's, that's that scenario. Or not. I mean, you know, if you never author remove existing products. Yeah. Um, you know, honestly, I think I think you have the 90% scenario. So I, I'm just kind of like, whichever way you want to go on this, I'm it'll probably be fine. The, I could defend either behavior at this point, um, the current behavior or the behavior you're proposing, Sean. Um, and and the in the end, the solution is you have to write a BA to handle this very, really, this, this is a very unusual scenario. Um, and and then we, if for some reason that ends up being false and it's a more common scenario than I think it is, then um, that's then we can just be like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> uh, we will have to add more to the language to support it, or someone will have to do it. So, yep, I, I, that's it. You know, I'd point out we I don't think we've seen a lot of this. No, I think Sean's covered the case that we saw that I always felt kind of bad about. But yeah, we didn't quite get that right. This, and I'd be like, what are you doing? Your... Like, this pack MSI package? I'm like, come on, build a better product <laughs> <laughs> at a certain level, right? So the like, guilt is reduced, so it's okay now. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, well you, you've gone from the, uh, you know, 80, uh, the, I don't know, 40 to you know, five or something like that. And the 40% yeah. case to the 5% case, I'm like, no, look, life's too short. <laughs> so honestly, it's too short to spend too much more time on this book. So I, I could go either way with this, Sean. Okay. I could defend it either. So what do we do with it? Sean's call. What do you want to do with it? Do you want to take your change? I, that's fine. Or do you want to keep the current behavior? And that's fine. Because I think you've got the big ones already. I I don't know. I mean, if we already covered everything that people have complained about, then I don't really care. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that people, I don't know about this case. This case, the what people would complain about, this one would be hard to tease out from all those others. They would have fallen in that one. So I don't have data that could say that the proposal that you've made is going to make some people happier or not. I don't know that. That's why I was kind of like, yeah, if you want to do it, I can see that. If you don't want to, that's fine too. Then I guess no. <laughs> there we go. Problem solved. All right. Do you want to leave it open in 4X or do you want to suspend it in 4X? I don't think it's a backwards compatible change. Um, that's fair. All right. So plan suspend? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> this, I, this, <laughs> yeah, I, I can see this problem happening. <laughs> um, burn error. Uh, so, what do you want to do? <laughs> you, 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 you've been changing the getting DU to log, so I haven't been deep in that code. I don't have any real input on this book. I can see it happening, and it's kind of amusing, and I don't have any more input. Uh, I mean, I think we should fix it. I'm not sure how. Okay. That sounds fantastic. I love those kind of issues. <laughs> no, that's, that's a total sarcasm. Um, 
I mean, should there should Deutal have like a global thing that it's inside of? I don't remember what I called it. It's it's the callback that yeah. Deutal provides you to listen to all the errors from Deutal. Yeah, I know that's pretty so, straightforward. I mean, that would be that's, the easiest way to do it. I think that's completely re reasonable. And Except that, that doesn't work multi-threaded. I was going to say, but you're going to have threading problems, right? <laughs> So, uh, so, so can that be thread specific? I don't. I haven't um, done things like that in native code. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I can see this problem. Probably should have someone dig into it. Uh, not it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. I got nothing else for you. I'll try to make the thread static work. Hopefully that. Yeah, maybe it'll be easy. Yeah. All right. Tag conversion is incomplete. Um, yeah, tag ref. I still don't care about tag ref. Um, <laughs> did I, I? I forgot to look. I was supposed to look. Anyway, give this to me. I'll, I'll go fix this. We killed off these things in V3, so I don't know how much I care about migrating things that should have already been removed. But um, I'll go do the patch thing, even though I don't care about patching. Uh, tag before, oh, the cam patch. It's ported to be, not all, yeah, fine. I'll, I'll take that too. I'll go look at this. I assume this is an integration. Yeah. Um, part of these. Do you want these as preview zero? Uh, the, yeah, right now for preview zero. I should, I need to just fix it. Whatever's wrong there. Yes. Give them preview zero, please. Um, part of the problem is that a lot of that test code you're bringing over, Sean, is three, seven era code. So it's got to be one more up leveled um, with the patch stuff. Um, all right, patch can't well, the, be... Wait a second, so you you implemented SWID 2 mm -hmm. in whatever, 310. 310, and yeah. And none, none of that work was done in 4. Right, and none of that was done in 4, right. And I tried to do it when I brought the code over, because I realized that halfway through all the stuff, I was, like, I was like, oh shoot, here's 4. Bob actually reminded me, he's like, you know, there's that thing. I was like, oh, I totally forgot about SWID 2. Um, that it was all done, so I had to go back and pull all that over. So I we should be on SWID two, and that's actually part of the conversion problem. Well, is that the three core two. isn't SWID two, but you need to make sure every there were burn changes as well. So I don't know what else is missing. I'll go double check and see if I got all the burn changes. I thought I I must not have pulled them. I mean, okay, I'll go look. I'll go look. You didn't it. touch burn as part of your tag stuff, so well, there's I, no I, way. I, yeah, that I thought about it and then didn't finish it. Yeah, so I will go get the burn stuff and pull it over too. Um, patch can't be created when MSI file got MSI file from Wix extension. Okay, I I believe this. This is not too much different than the Wixlib one, possibly that I already have. So yeah, I'll take that too. I'm hoping those are the same issue or very close um provides element under chain package can get lost fine i'll go fix this too yep give these all to me these are all i knew these are all coming when i saw them burn integration test expects burn ignore dependencies all to work for packages and bundles all right i don't know this was all done post things that i was dealing with in burn Cleanup integration, the bundles uninstalled with the parameter, ignore all dependencies to force the uninstall even if dependence exists. Okay. Skips package dependency checking, but not bundle dependency checking. Right. So I didn't know whether that was intended behavior or not. I don't know Wait, either. It, don't don't we want to not do that so we can actually verify dependency checking? This is the test is done, and we want to make sure all the bundles go away so we can run the test again next time without manually uninstalling things. This is basically a quick way to say, all right, I ran the test. I failed if stuff was left behind that wasn't supposed to be left behind. Now that we've done that, let's try to 
rip everything else off so the next test um, is not impacted by the previous test. That's the idea. Yeah, so the, the contents of the test will never use this. It's the cleanup of the test that we that's using this. Right, right. that makes sense. Um, I don't know the answer to this. Ignore dependencies all. So all the MSIs will get removed, but related bundles will not. Is that the end result, Sean? Uh, well, this is, as far as I can tell, this is only forward compatible bundle stuff. So if if it detect, detects, de no, that's not true. If, if a bundle detects a dependent on itself, it'll do absolutely nothing. It'll skip. Uh -huh. You have to go uninstall the dependents before it'll let you uninstall I itself. I bet they missed that case. Because Visual Studio didn't use it, so I bet they missed that case when they did. So we should skip the bundle dependency checking then. Probably. I don't know any reason not to. That just make it harder on people. <laughs> yeah, I, I just to uninstall I, I something. That'd be yeah, the only reason. I just don't know why you'd choose that. You're like remove this, okay, but not if there's a bundle thing. Like no, I said remove. I told you to ignore the dependencies. What's the switch that says remove dependencies? No, really all. <laughs> I meant it. Isn't there a switch in MSI that ended up that way? There's a switch in burn. Re really reboot? No, 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 sorry. No, I meant uh, a thing in really suppress and really suppress or something. I, I forgot. Anyway, I feel like this, the, the, there is a thing in MSI where you said do this, and then it turned out that it didn't do it in all cases, so they had to add another, no, really do this kind of thing. And I thought it was restart, but maybe it's not. Might be. Suppress and really but suppress? Kind of thing. So it was, anyway. There's there's all sorts of examples of you know. Um, no no no. Try, and then try really hard. Mm -hmm. All right. I have no reason why. Yeah, it's not logical. I have no reason why that would be. All right. Cool. So I, what do we do with this? We give it to Sean. I'll do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want my machine messed Four. up next time I make a mistake again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's essentially what it comes down to. One, two, three, four. That right. Okay. All right. Um, moving on. Um, Sean, do you want to... Do we need to look at the issue for this one? Oh, yes. All right. All right. Let's talk about the design issues that we have. Yeah, thanks, Jacob. I, I wasn't going crazy. It's reboot. Like, yeah, suppress and really suppress or something like that. Yeah. Uh, memory, you only so much. All right. Uh, 5125, Sean? Did, are we skipping yours? We'll do mine second. We'll do yours. I think yours will be less painful than mine. Um, well, I mean, it's just that. Y y that second one is what we already did last week, so oh, that should shoot. have been yours. I deleted oh. No, that's a that's my mistake. I deleted the wrong line and didn't even notice. Um I will <laughs> I'm not gonna fix it here because this is a PDF, not a PowerPoint, but um I will go get the right number um in a bit. So let's do five one two five definitely. Okay. And I yeah. will sorry, that was I don't <sighs> what did I do? All right. Um the issue helpful? I think so. I don't have a whip for it, so no, that's fine. all we got. Right. Okay. Why don't you tee this one up, Sean, while I go and find my file number that I was supposed to find. <laughs> the mail the mail you sent to the, to Wixdes might be useful as well, Sean. Or oh. the mail that Sean sent to Wixdes might be useful, Rob. You, you know, that's a great idea, but I'm not going to bring that up right now. Okay. I just wasn't sure how Rob was going to bring that up. <laughs> um, um, you know what would be even cooler would be to just play the two minutes or whatever it was from the previous 
meeting that we did. <laughs> I'm not quite able to do that yet either, but I've, 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 um, and really, I don't want to have to listen to myself. So. <sighs> I, I'm getting more used to it. I can hear myself on the soccer videos that I've been doing. So. I always, when I need to refer to a previous meeting or the meeting as I write the highlights, I always play it at like 2x speed. Gotcha. My okay. voice is not a chipmunk voice. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, so the issue here is trying to have something to force... Um, oh, Jacob got a good point. We probably can sort of mute him now. There's my mail. Um, Why don't I think about it being a mail? Thank you, Jacob. Fantastic. There we go. That was me, by the way. <laughs> oh, sorry. Thank you, Sean. I don't... I'm used to Jacob putting links in and not you. So there we go. Great. Good job, Sean. Thank you. All right. Uh, floor is yours. <laughs> All right. So this is implementing the why well, implemented the cache equals always a long time ago so that you could force burn to always cache the package no matter what and then this issue is about asking for basically like if the package is supposed to be installed then you always want it cached but if it's not installed then you don't want it to be automatically cached so I think a lot of the discussion is about what to call it, whether it's repair or for repair. So wait, and then wait, wait. This scenario is the MSI is already present, but it's not in the cache. Right. Okay. So the MSI is already installed on the machine. The bundle wants it installed, but then the action ends up being none, and then since the action is none, burn doesn't cache it. Right. Yes, that, that makes total sense. I, I remember this debate as well. The debate was, well, if it's already there, let's not go through the effort to download it. Um, and you can't say, hey, I want to cache this MSI because that'll uninstall it. <laughs> you can't set its action state to cache. Should burn be the one to cache this? The bundle A installed MSI A, then bundle B opts to not also cache A because it's already there. Could you not query MSI's install source to get the cache? Well, the, the, the cache path for an MSI is, is you know, determinant. Yeah, that already works. The scenario that you have there, Jacob, already works. But it's... Um, the user installed the MSI by hand, right, outside of a bundle. Is this a problem? This is a problem if, say, someone installs an MSI outside of Burn. Right, by hand. Yep. Okay, so this is not a this this is right. It's a dependent on bundle to bundle is going to work fine. It's, or you it's change your mind. Change. You had it cache equals no in one version. In the next version, you're like cache equals yes, and then in that next version, you don't update it. Now want to cache oh, okay. for some reason. All right. It's kind of like you changed your mind over time. You now want it yeah. cached, and you want Burn to do the work to put it on the machine. Like you want it cached. You're like, yes, cache it. I'm I'm installing it. I want it cached. Please do that. Um, now always. Oh, but and you don't want always. You want the user to not. If the user's not installing the MSI, don't cache it. But if the user is installing it, please do make sure that the the, it is cached. Um, so this, I mean, what this is really kind of trending towards is that the, maybe the BA, <laughs> well, boo on them, change them inside of a new product and cache the new one. Yeah. Right. Do an upgrade, essentially, Jake, is what you're saying. Um, I've seen this with, with people that update, that, that distribute updates as MSIs right. rather than as new bundles or patch bundles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, where this is kind of leading to is that we overloaded or we integrated the caching concept with 
the installation concept, so as a level in the world. And maybe caching should have been an orthogonal um, uh, level that you can just be like, look, I can decide caching and I can install it and I can configure its install level and those are just independent dials, like they move independently. I'm not saying we do that in four, I'm just wondering if that would better um, represent the world and be more the way to deal with this. Um, well, I guess part of what I was saying here is I think we should add a force cache option. Right, you're, you're, you're starting to expose the idea that these are managed independently. Um, and I'm yeah, but I guess my level is the BA still doesn't get to decide whether it stays cached or not. It's just helping to decide whether to cache it. Why can't the BA control that? Why shouldn't the BA be able to control that? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. It would just be another thing to implement, I guess. Well, only if you wanted to override it, right? Because the default would do as it does today, and everything's good. Um, you, could, you would be able to ignore it. I'm not again. I'm not saying now. I'm just trying to get to the where. Where is the the correct end place for this and burn. And this issue, which is part of the reason I didn't respond to the email because I kept getting stuck in thinking about this and not not finish the thought because <laughs> I had too many other thoughts um, competing, namely how do I get ISIS working again? Um, but um, the thought is um, separating the cache concept from the installation level. Bob, you haven't said anything. Have I said something that's like completely wrong there? Or Sean, like, like, no, that's a terrible idea. Or, oh, that would simplify a couple of things that we've done. Well, you're not completely wrong. Okay. Um, that, that, that's high praise, no, by it, the way. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, the problem is they're not, they're not completely orthogonal because obviously if you're going to install it, you need, um, you need the bits. And I well, think this well, is, yeah, but we've already well, we've already burned yeah, that bridge. And, and, people complain about it, it's like I told you not to cache it, and then you still cached it, and we're like, yeah, we yeah, put yeah. it into a secure location so we can install it, so it can't be tampered with. And then they're like, uh, uh, oh, I was like, if you could come up with another way to do it, tell us. And then they can't solve it. It's like, yeah, okay, right, the solution sure. to that problem next. Right, but I'm saying, I'm, I'm just saying it means that that, you know, the BA can't have complete control. They can have complete control uh, over the final state of the cache. I, that's kind of what the, I'm saying. The final state of the cache. Yes. Okay. okay. Sorry. And it, that's, it does I not guess... change the intermediate. Like, when you say cache equals no, it does not mean we will not use the cache. It just means yeah, we clean it yeah. up when we're done. Right, right. And I don't see any reason <sighs> yeah, why okay. in the plan we can't say the default is whatever you set for cache equals always or yes or no, right? And the default would come out and be like, yes, the level for this will be cached. And you're like, great, and the BA will ignore it most of the time, except in these cases. And in, in these cases, it would be like, yeah, I always want it cached. In this scenario, please, you know, um, cache the MSI for me, or, you know, or don't. I mean, I and guess part of the it. problem is it's deciding pretty late when it should be cached or not. Right. Deciding pretty late. So there's a lot of inputs into the decision whether to cash or not. Yeah. And involving the BA at that point would be, it wouldn't be, it'd have to be like a, new, a brand new message. It couldn't be as part of the existing messages we already had today. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I don't know that we do this in four. Although, now would be a great time to do it, to break this whole thing and make it all separate now. Um, why couldn't I mean, we, no you're saying we couldn't put it in the callback for planning the MSI, or the planning the package, because it's too late in the planning process? Cash planning comes after package action planning. The message uh, is too early. The, the, this message is too early, or... 
yeah, the on plan package. On plan package is. begin is too early. It's too early. Yeah. You can't. You don't know what the cache should be until they pick which request state they're going to pick. Well, um, we, is it that complicated? Like it, we. It seems like we should. <laughs> it seems like we should be able to at the last minute say. We know if it's in the cache or not. We know if the file's already there. Uh, I'm changing that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We will not. Gravity goes up I, now. Okay. <laughs> I mean, even even today, the detecting of the packages or the files the right size. You don't know whether they're correct or not. Oh, that's right. That's right. We okay. We've had we've seen this before. When people get into the uh, um, the state where where detect says yeah something is there. But then that's apply the comes file. along and says, no, it's corrupt. Yeah, that's the wrong thought. Yeah, I, I remember that problem. That was a very late bug that was like, oh, yeah, we got that wrong. Painful. Okay. But if you're going with the model of the engine says, here's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And then the BA can decide whether or not to change it. Right. That was the model. The engine can't tell the BA what it's going to do. For caching? Not without knowing what the BA wants the package to be. But no, no. But it would say, look, here's the default value. So if, if you know, the MS, right, what are we doing? It's... If the default act if the default request state is absent, the cache is gonna be no. If the BA says install, then the default cache would be yes. Right. So I, I, if they explicitly change it, they'd have to change both bits. Yeah. Yes. I, I agree with that. Or we'd have to add a, a tertiary one where like here I've I've explicitly set this, I have not explicitly set this. Uh, I, I've explicitly set the install level, and I'm not explicitly set the cache level. You, you know, I, I have I explicitly overrided your install level, but not your cache level. Do your thing, right, or or whatnot. Yeah, but but I had one problem. You know, we don't let even BAs change the actions. We only let them change the requests. Yep. Burn still decides what. That actually turns into action-wise. Yeah, yeah. This is this is essentially the request state for the final state of the cache. Okay. Again, right. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, That's right, right. It, That's fair. It's you know, look, we said it's going to be absent. The UI said default is absent, and the U, the BA said, no, please install this. And if it ignores the, and it does not, you know, it leaves the cache return value null, let's say, or or something then the engine would be like, oh, they said install it instead. All right, what cache level do they want? Oh, they didn't say. Well, then we'll calculate based off what we have and go forward. That's doable. Um, I guess another problem here is that the there's basically an operation to acquire the package to cache it, and then there's an operation, and then so operation to like clean it out or not. Correct. So there needs to be a way for the BA to say, yeah, leave the cache alone. Right. That's and, and and don't verify it. Like because of the changes I'm making, if you make it if the BA requests the engine to cache the package, then it's gonna go and verify every file, and if the file's wrong, it's going to delete it. And I don't... It's... I don't think the engine should spend its time verifying all those files 
if the BA, if all the BA wanted was just to leave the cash alone. But that's an issue today, right? Well, the BA has no influence over whether the engine does a cash operation or not, so not really a problem today. Right, but if the but if the BA continued to ignore this flag and always return null, then the BA wouldn't. Then nothing would change there either. It would just be like, well, BA didn't say do something to the cash, so we will continue to do the same behavior and burn today. Well, I mean, there's a difference. Well, back to what I was saying before, we're not trusting detects. That we're not trusting that detect can tell whether a package is cached or not. Correct. When we go to apply, we're always going to assume that the cache is corrupt. Isn't that the best behavior today, then? That's the behavior I, today. I'm, I'm, missing, I'm, I'm missing why the BA being able to control the cache level changes anything. Because if if the BA tells the engine to don't take any action, then it'll just the engine's going to leave the cache alone. If the B, if now we add the ability to say I want the request state to be none, but I want the cache to be yes then during apply, the engine's going to have to go and verify the cache. Okay. Which is a bunch of work that's that if it's Boolean. the VA might want to skip. Yeah, I mean, that's if, that's if the cache statement is a Boolean, right? As opposed to a make sure it's there, make sure it's correct. I mean, you know, we, we can change that dial there. I mean, I guess no one's asking for this. <laughs> yeah, no one's asking for this, but which is where I'm kind of like with this whole thing. Well, I mean, with the cache equals always, people were already asking for the ability to force cache the package. Yep. So this is just refining that a little bit. Yep. Without giving it the full power of what you're suggesting. Oh, I was operate. I was taught. I was based off of this. So that's, I'm just. That's the same. Thing thing. Well, this is, this is basically allowing the BA to override the cache equals always, which is what I need. <laughs> Wait. But it's not going as far as you were talking about. Right. That's why I was trying to figure out where, how far do we go? Um, like, what's the correct place for it to be? I don't like history with these force concepts has not been great. It's kind of of these force booleans has not been great in general. So I try to avoid them, um, and instead try to figure out what's the what's the dial because the force is essentially that you know you went from one two and now you want a three option. <laughs> Right, do this, do this, and then oh, I need one more. So instead of just saying calling it force, it's kind of like let's describe what those three states are that we're trying to get to. Um, well, I guess that's what I'm trying to say is acquiring the package is one action that you take, and that's separate from whether you want the package to stay in the cache or not. I agree with that. That force cache parameter that I'm proposing is letting the BA decide whether to acquire the package or not, independent of what action it's taking on the package. Well, 
why would I want to force acquire if it's going to end up being cash equals no in the end? What's the scenario? Oh, this is your repair scenario? I want to, no, wait, yeah. it's not going to end up there in the end. Wait, um, I want to force it to cash oh. again and then delete it at the end? No, you're right. There's no point in force acquiring the package if it's not going to be kept. Right, and that's why I've been thinking this as the BA declaring its final state. It has no control. Um, I was thinking it didn't need any control over the uh, caching behavior, although your point about verification being slow is a good one. But at a certain level, I don't know that we can give that. It's kind of a security thing, so I don't know how much we can give it away to the BA. We just have to... I'm hesitant to give that problem to the BA without knowing that we're maintaining security. If we can do so, we can skip it and automatically detect whether we need to verify or not, or when we automatically detect when we do not need to verify, because obviously verifying all the time is the safest thing to do, then the BA being involved in that part, I, I'm less interested in. I'm more interested in the BA being able to say what the final state of the cache should be for a package. Essentially being able to say, you know what, I really want this thing to stick around after I'm done. Or the MSI is already here, I would like it to be cached at the end. And we'd be like, oh, look, you're in luck. The MSI is here, and you asked for it to be cached, and it's cached, which means no work to do. Or, oh, look, the MSI is already here. Oh, you wanted that cached? Well, we can do that. The BA just getting the ability to decide whether the packages should stay cached at the very end. And the other way to look at it would be in the UI, a BA being able to say, hey, um, user, do you want to keep all this stuff around after I finish the install to make your repairs and your uninstalls and your life generally better at the expense of burning a bunch of disk space? Yes, no. No? Okay, then I will override my default of cache equals yes to cache equals no in the UI. Every time a package comes by, I will say cache equals no. For example, um, a BA could do that. They can't do that today. But it's all about declaring the final state of the cache, not the, because we're always going to cache it in between. If it's not there, we have to put it there if we're going to install. I mean, if we're going to install. Well, the, I, I don't think that's possible because I just implemented all that stuff to determine when the pack, when the bundle should stay registered or not. Mm -hmm. And the, whether the package is cached or not is one of the inputs to that. So if, if the BA is choosing not to cache a package when the manifest said it should, mm -hmm. then we'd somehow have to persist that option and ignore the fact that the package exists in the cache when deciding whether to oh, register the bundle or not. because post restart, you would forget the plan. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that just got harder. Mm hmm. That is harder. So, overriding whether to keep the package in the cache or not is not something I'm terribly interested in. That's why you don't want to let them do that that full control over it as opposed to the little bit of control which is the um, essentially you want to say I will let you no, no uh, it, it's just the hey if the package is here already allow the bundle to say yes I would like that to also ensure it's cached right I mean it, it's that narrow slice of the overall the wider problem. Yeah. How much do people complain about this? Bob, do you remember? I, Sean, do you know? Like, are there a lot of people that come out and say, hey, I my burn did not cache my MSI. I was very disappointed that it was because the MSI was running on the machine. How often does it's this come happen? up? It has come it's up. It's come up. I don't think it's very common. And, of course, you know, Sorry. It only happens because of naked MSIs. Yes, I'm slowly working my way to where Jacob's at. <laughs> if we're not going to do the the 
let, let the BA control the final cache state to enable that UI scenario that I was talking about. Hey, do you want us to clean out the cache when we're done installing? Yes, no. Um, if we're not going there, because it's complicated, it's hard, and we just don't feel like it, then the, hey, let me repair this for you, I'm not sure it's worth the language change to try to declare it, or the API change to declare it that will be like, hey, we can repair the cache if it's already installed, but we can't let you give, you don't get full control over the cache. Well, okay, let me let me change things. Let me reverse the polarity. Okay. What if the default caching behavior was to cache, was to, if a package is present, uh, I'm going to try to language lawyer this and it's going to be weird. If the, if the package is present and therefore execute is none, but it isn't cached, we cache it by default. Basically, if it's installed, can, it should also be cached unless it's yes. cache equals no, of course. Yes. Now, the downside, you, yes, right, right. And and suddenly, people are going to start caching in this scenario. Who would be yes. upset? The people that would be upset were the ones that expected burn to not go get the bits because the MSI was already present. Yes. And to those people, I'm pretty sure Jacob would say, boo, <laughs> don't install your MSIs outside of a, your bundle. Um, I'm speaking for Jacob, but I'm curious when the, the stream catches up to him if he's going to be like, yes, exactly that, um, if he's even still here. Um, and cash equals no would still work as expected. Cash yeah, yeah, equals yeah. always would still work as expected. Of course. It's not an unreasonable default, but it is a change. But I'd also like to point out that this force cache parameter, like, it, it's going to make the code a lot easier for me. Like, when I tried to change the implementation of cache equals always, I don't think I have it right. And um, I can clean up the code a lot if I can expose um, that through this. Bob? Yeah. Does men to fix this? I, mm, no, I think that's the answer. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, think I, I, I think that's the answer. Yeah, that's the answer. It is. Yeah. I'm, so, uh, how are they related? Um. So, Sean, this is going to make sense, but it'll make sense later. Um, <laughs> men, um, if when doing action mend. If package installed, if package supposed to be cached, if package not cached, in mend cache package. Okay, but how is that different from repair? Uh, if in mend, if in mend, package installed, package cat and cache equals yes, and package cached, the result is none. In repair, no, that's not true. What? Yeah. No. Mend is mend mend executes the package. Ah no. Oh. Yeah. It does. That much I remember. Mend execute it's just it's just a different reinstall mode. Ah. Sorry. It's it's a softer repair, not a you know tickle with a feather repair. Well, men should fix it too. Um, I'd argue, just like repair should fix it. So that's Jacob's point, right? If you repair the package, we should fix the cache too, then, right? But we're going to have well, to because we're going to need the source. So we're right, going to fix the you, cache. Okay, but if you do pop, repair. pop the stack, pop the stack a few bits, a few levels, because the the scenario is you can't cache the package because it wasn't installed when you had the bundle on disk. And then you've since deleted the bundle. Obviously, in a in a, in a you know web download scenario, the package will get re, re don't re downloaded, and everything's fine. The scenario where this is a problem is you have a you know self contained bundle, and you double clicked, and one of the packages didn't get cached. Mm -hmm. 
and then you've deleted the bundle, and so you can't. There's no source for the cash. You know, I think we should just keep the current behavior. After going all the way around this, it's. Because this is going to hit us like. So, another way to get in this scenario is to go back. If someone deletes their cash, and then you do it, somehow do it. I guess, when would you do an install operation? Someone deletes their cash, you're already installed. If you do modify, you want to go add something? Yeah, you want to go or add Or repair? No, no, so repair, I think, should put the things back in the cache. Right? Because it's no going to need the source. Well, you're going to prompt for a source. If you're repairing, you're going to need the source of that package if it's installed. So you're going to have to go get it. Even if cache equals right. no, we have to go get it. Right, but remember, this is this is the self-contained bundle scenario. There is no source. For, there is no source. Source is gone. The original. I mean, that was the original bug, right? And and I mean, obviously, if you have if you have download URLs, then any operation that needs to cache can cache. Yeah. Yeah. The that's... problem is. You, when you when you no longer have the source, mm -hmm. and granted, there's an easy workaround, kinda. It's actually not an easy workaround because you know sometimes you can't find the original bundle that you install. Yeah, I know it, that the that scenario is not fun. No, and you end up needing to try to upgrade. But, um, yeah, that's why I said you know we should default caching whenever the package ends up installed. That solves that one scenario. Because you're assuming if we're doing an install operation, we're in a case where we have the media. Well. Uh -huh. Modify is the case where you wouldn't have the media. And if for some reason... Any, any, bug, any maintenance mode. Yes, any, any maintenance mode, mode right. Because remember, this thing. would also – wait, does this apply – oh, actually, so this is interesting. Does this apply to XE packages as well? Because frequently we would need to cache – we would have to cache the XE package so we can run uninstall. That might be a bigger scenario than the MSI. Because that would mean even uninstall is blocked. Do we cache before uninstall? We must. Oh, if it's not yeah. there? Yeah, or XE packages. Yeah. yeah, we must. It, it, it's only the case where it's in the state that it needs to be. That we right, but I'm saying, does it. that apply to XE packages as well? If the tech condition is true, do we still cache? Yeah. We maybe, maybe we override the default that MSIs get. I don't know. No, no. no. If if you say cache equals no, and you say uninstall an XE, we're going to prompt you for source to go get that XE. We have to. I'm not saying cash equals no. I'm saying the current behavior for MSI packages, I know, the current behavior is that if the MSI package is installed, the package will not be cached, acquired or cached. Right. For XE packages, if the detect condition is true, will the package still be acquired and cached for uninstall? Oh, my guess would be no, but Sean would know better. Well, I mean, if you ask burn to uninstall the package, then yeah, we'd have to cache it. No, and I'm, I'm talking about at the install time. He's saying if you're installing it and the, and the XE is already detected as installed, would we go and cache it? As long as the action is none, it will not cache it. Right. Okay. Okay. So then, then my suggestion makes even more sense because that's a scenario where you're now, you're screwed. I mean, if you cannot acquire the original self-contained bundle, even an upgrade bundle might still fail because yes. it couldn't. But well, we're going to have, it, we, we are opening ourselves, the other direction is we're opening ourselves to more cases where you need the source for MSIs. We're in the, because uninstall did not need the MSI to be present to uninstall. It. Right, right, right. And now we're saying that any install operation, modify operation, if we find that MSI is missing from the cache, we're going to put it there. If, if uh, not cash, I, I'm, uh, that's not what I'm suggesting. 
So it's, I guess, a oh. valid lifestyle choice. I wouldn't right. suggest it for uninstall. You would not? I would with, not. No, I was saying I modify. Not. Sorry, if I said uninstall, I meant modify. For any modify operation now, if the MSI is missing and cache equals yes, then we're going to have to cache it before skipping the install of the MSI. So there's going to be more potentials for source prompts. Um, than there were okay. In the past. I, I, I have not, I've, I've given zero consideration to anything beyond install. The initial install, right. The initial install, because yeah. that's when you're guaranteed to have a self-contained bundle that has all the packages that you need. Right? Maybe that's the answer. Do we, kn we know that state, right? Do we know if it's an initial install? I don't know that we care normally. I'm, I mean, you know whether the bundle was not initially registered. Right. So we one fix would be, rather than adding another state in here, just adding a, if the cache is yes and the MSI is installed, and this is the initial time this bundle is being installed, cache it like Bob is suggesting. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just fix it for you. It's like, yeah, you're here. We, you should have the media because you're doing an install, and we'll just give it to you. Um, we'll put it in the cache because, hey, that's what you asked for. And that's, that's essentially the case because then during modify operations, then we're not trying to put stuff in the cache at that point that we don't technically need. I think that's probably the case we should avoid. Right? During modify, we should not be trying to shove things into the... That, modify is not a good time to be trying to fix the cache. I would agree with that. But yeah. if, if the modify... I, I'm confused about why there's additional source prompts because if modify isn't running a package then so i have a bundle i have five msis in it they're all marked cache equals yes first install they all get cached i as a user do a dumb thing and i delete my package cache okay okay now i um do a modify <laughs> right and i uh remove one of the msis from the set of chains uh, so I, I choose one of the MSIs to be removed, you know, through the UI, whatever the bundle allows me to do. Then four of those MSIs are going to prompt for source because they need to be put back in the cache because they're installed. I'm doing a modify, and I, they're marked cache equals yes, so they need to be put back there, even though in the end all I'm going to end up doing is removing one MSI. That would not need a source prompt. I'm saying that I don't think we should get in a situation in modifies that we're prompting for source. But your point that during the initial install, since it's the initial install, we're going to need the media for anything as well. So let's just, if we're coming along at the initial install, then, hey, you know what? We noticed that this MSI is installed but not cached. Initial install, we're going to fix that for you. We're going to cache it because that's what it should be. And just in modify, we're going to take one step back. You know, that was supposed to be cached, but we're in modify. Now is not the time to be fixing that. Essentially, that's what I'm saying. Same as an uninstall. Hey, you know, that MSI is supposed to be cached. We're uninstalling. I'm not going to do the work to cache it right now because why would I going to uninstall the stupid things? That's that would be really dumb. Same modify should be in the same thing. And install should switch to the mode you're suggesting, Bob, of, hey, you know what? I'm installing. I should have the media. Let's get this right so that when you get done, you're in a good spot where, hey, look, the situation is, you know, correct. And, you know, if you turn things on and off and all those scenarios you were talking about before Bob all work out after the initial install. Okay. Um, I guess my, my confusion though is if, if a package is present and it's requested state is present, which is what you would get in a typical modify, there's the action state is not correct. Unless you're doing, unless you're doing, um, you know, features. Correct. So there would be no action taken on the package. So why would it's why would it suddenly prompt for source unless we were to force it? Okay, because right. under the I original agree. proposal, <laughs> that, that. 
under the original proposal, it would have, because there was it would have done it all the time. It would have said, oh, I just noticed this package is supposed to be cached. It's not. Let me make it cached, even during modify, even during initial install. Okay. Possibly even during an uninstall. Well, not, hopefully not during an uninstall. I mean, you have to not during uninstall. That would be dumb. Unless it's an XE because you need it. I mean, so I, I think essentially, well, yeah. I think the guiding principle is we should do, we should avoid doing source work. We should avoid, we should avoid source work um, during non-install operations, right? Like the initial install, sure. we should do source work. All other times, we should avoid fixing up the cache because we think it doesn't look quite right, right? Like, hey, you, this thing says it's supposed to be cached. It's not here. Ah, modify is not the time to do that. Uninstall is not the time to do that. Um, none of those times, unless we need it. Well, then clearly we're going to have to fix it. If we need it, we're going to have to put it back. Oh, you want to install that XE? Oh, the XE is missing. Well, we're going to have to go get that XE because we're not going to uninstall without the XE. All right, there you go. So at that point, though, it doesn't really matter if it's, quote, unquote, initial install. Any install operation should get that behavior because that's one way of, that, then that would be one way of fixing the cache. I suppose I'm a little hesitant on that one if it's not the initial install. Aren't you in the – can you do an install from – Yeah. I'm hesitant because of the doing the install when you're in the cache and getting in the source prompt scenarios. That's why I'm a little hesitant to go that far. That's why I added you, the initial you, install. You have to do it all the ways for install for .NET Framework reboots <laughs> for the managed oh. VA. Gosh. Keep forgetting because the plan's not going to survive. But I agree, the initial install is definitely when you have the media. Um, so it's safe then. It's always safe then. Do we care if it's an upgrade versus quote unquote initial install? No. Okay. No. because we're not going to. If the previous bundle was supposed to have cached something and we want it, we don't care that the previous bundle forgot to cache its stuff or lost its cache. The, the, the thing we're upgrading has no bearing on what we're doing at this point in time because it comes later. So it, it's not. Although different. that's the actual, wasn't that the, no, that was a related bug. Yeah. Right? I mean, there there are ways you can get into that situation because the, yeah, yeah. that could cause it, but, the initial bundle can't care. <laughs> it's like, okay. we're not doing that level of communication between bundles. Um, yeah. Maybe it is just install then. And thank you for keeping reminding me about the force restart scenario. Well, it uh, caused me a lot of work, so <laughs> yeah, I know. hard to forget. <laughs> you will not forget about it. No, no, no. It was very easy. We discussed it for a while, and magically it was solved. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Some number of months later, it just showed up, and I was like, that was fantastic. Um, all right. I, I, So I am slowly working to the point that I think what Bob said is correct, or Sean, I don't know who said it, that install will put the cash back if that's what the package said for yes or always. Is this a problem with always? Other than the, you know... No, no, no. Always, always patch. puts it back. Yeah. It? So this is yeah. just... This is default behavior. We're just talking yeah, yeah. about the default behavior. Correct. Okay. Correct. So Jacob's covered. Cash equals no, we're still good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, we're not changing that. Yeah. No. Jacob's scenario is arguably the easier one. Because he doesn't want it cached at the end. Well, then it won't be right, cached right, at the right. end. And anytime yeah. he needs it, it's going to have to cache it again. So it's like, right. I hope you don't need your you know, things. And he probably doesn't have any X's in his bundle. Because that experience would be very poor. Yeah, that experience would be really poor. That non-permanent X's. Now, at recurrable really non. About that. But it's always that, I don't. That hasn't changed. No. And but, so why hasn't it been a problem? Why hasn't that been a problem? Because it just, one, the cache is generally there, and two, if we need it, we go get it. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's, 
I'm I'm very curious because um, you know a a a web SKU bundle solves all these problems, right? There's always a download URL. That's the only way to get it. Yeah, that's what Sean so, just said. <laughs> or um, like Jacob just said. Now I'm getting you both yeah. confused in the thread. Uh, in chat. Yes. Um, anyway, yeah. So so, but I've always anticipated that that self-contained bundles are like the more common case. So yeah. we have this problem where the bundle goes away and potential you know, sources go away with it. Yes. Yes. And the experience with MSI in this behavior in this scenario is very poor as well. Bye, Jacob. There it is. Oh, see ya. I, I think the end result is that we just pivot this based off of install. I think that's the best scenario here. We don't add another state into the world. We just say, if you're doing an install, then we will attempt to make the cache correct based off of your bundle. It's, a sim it's simple. It's probably the scenario you want, and it avoids the other cases where it, it avoids us over prompting for a source unless you are a bundle that regularly does install operations instead of modify operations. Um, so, so let's think of the XE scenario. Um, you depend on .NET, so you throw it in because why not? It's easy. Um, in this scenario, we would cache it. On initial install. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> such a simple scenario, such a common scenario, which blows everything up. Yep. <laughs> Should people really be caching that anyway? No. That you'd mark it cache equals no, and that would solve it. That's true. Actually, yeah. If 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 a package is permanent, maybe this is why XE packages tend to be the redists that end up permanent. Correct. Um, the ones you're thinking about, yeah. So if something is marked permanent, does that influence whether we cache it by default? And it's already there? Yeah. I could... All right, so if we're doing an install, and the package says cache equals yes, sorry, we're doing an install. The package is already installed. but it's not cached. We're doing an install. If it's permanent, and it says cache equals yes, and it's permanent, do we not put the cache back? I mean, you're right. We can just say cache equals no solves the problem, and we can even put cache equals no in the, the package groups in the NetFX extension. And, and solve the problem that way. Yeah, I, I think that's the right answer. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think it still holds because if you have repair commands on it, you're going to want that thing in there during the install. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right. Which is why we <laughs> removed the repair command. Which, when we removed the repair command, we needed market cache equals no just to avoid all of that complex that time that nobody really wanted to spend. Like no, I don't want to take ownership of repairing the .NET framework. It's like yeah, we got that wrong. Sorry, that was our yeah. bad. Yeah, I I I think that's well, right. We don't I think... have to change it to permanent if we do that. Then I'm sorry. Yeah, it's not permanent now. No. You can uninstall it. Well, the really our definition for the .NET framework is not permanent. That's correct. Wow, that seems wrong. Who did that? <laughs> that means it might have been me, but I, that's that's surprising. Well, or is it? I maybe. No, no, we should not. I thought I had uninstall arguments. It does. Um, however, it is marked permanent equals yes. Oh, thank God. Yeah, so it's like one of those like why have uninstall argument? I, I we were being complete, right? And we were yes. being complete and. Rather than going, you know what, really, nobody should be doing this. So 
or if, if we kept it, it's one of those, hey, Sean, does your new override thing allow us to, or reusable definitions allow us to set the repair conditions or the repair and uninstall on a separate package that nobody uses just, but is there for, you know, documentation. So I don't know. Honestly, it should be like in our, in our WXS code, we should have the, the correct strings and comment it out and be like, look, if you want to take this code and market repair equals yes, just take these lines, put them in. But we don't think you should. Here, here's the install command only, no repair, no uninstall. Have a nice day. And I bet almost everybody's like, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. And the 0.1% that want to know what the commands were be like, hey, look, this is really nice. They documented the commands right here. Move on. That's it. That would be it. And the only reason I'm saying that is because we've already have the repair commands. <laughs> if we didn't, I'd be like, I don't know, go figure them out. You shouldn't, probably shouldn't do that with your MSI. Or your, your I mean, I took them out. Yeah, okay, great. I, I think that's fine. I think that's the right thing. And I think the whole scenario still works then. Thank you for the scare, Bob, but I think everything holds correctly. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, I mean, it's correct. Uh, there's just so many scenarios to work our way through. Yes. This is why it's good that we, you know, have these uh, live and, opportunities. And, and this, Sean, is fine. why I knew I wasn't going to put all this in an email. Because <laughs> I knew there was this. There was something about it that I just couldn't get my head wrapped around of the, what are all the angles to this thing? Um, yes. So, so can I do the force cache? I don't think we should. I think we should just base it off install. Why do you need force cache? It's why do I need force cache? So when I tried to re-implement cache equals always to let the BA overwrite it, because the prereq BA needs to be able to say no. It's a, it's a lot harder to do that right. So be, the pre the prereq BA needs to be able to say, I don't want this cached. So then when you start say, saying the request date of cache will uninstall the package if it's installed, that means the BA needs to get the request date perfect to make sure that if the package is already installed, then the package stays installed and it gets cached. Does that make sense? The prereq BA needs to turn off always. Right. And making that happen through the request state is very complicated. Because you can't just say, turn all these off. Yeah, you don't want to do, you want to just do. I mean, really, you want to say, completely skip this package. That, that's really what you want to do. That's really what the prereq BA wants to do. It's like, look, I'm going to take care of the things that I care about, and I really want the plan to pretend that these other things do not exist at all. Yeah, that's true. It wants it, it wants a skip. It wants request. a very big hand, hammer. Yeah, it's just like, ignore this completely. Skip this completely. It just, I think... It's not cash related. It's just this does at this point in time this does not exist. No dependency processing, nothing like that. I think that's the thing. And it would be odd to have a flag in the callback just for the prereq BA. But it also would be odd to have an action just for the prereq BA, which is the other input into the system install but only the things I care about yeah and that doesn't work because you have to tell yeah so um 
it'd be install and only if the BA tell what would it be? It'd be install none and then let the BA fix things after that. That's actually probably what it is, right? What if it is the action like what if it's action none? <laughs> and so then so the BA doesn't get to pick the action. The BA sorry, picks what the request it, state. The request the, the go state. What whatever the, the execute state. What is that the request state? I forget the name. Yeah, there's it's it's a request state. Right. So what if there was a none? There is a request state none today. And it's an error if you pass it in, right? No. Oh. What does it do if you say request state none? To execute, to plan, to, execute, to plan. Sorry, are you talking about an action? Yeah. So, no, so in no, the, no, 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 no. I, I want action. Sorry, Bob got it right. There is the action state when you no, go. No. So, no. So on on plan package begin, that's where the BA gets to pick what happens with the package. No, the BA also gets to say what I want to plan before that. When it calls plan, it passes in an action. That's true. That. What if you could say plan none, where the engine is like, oh, I'm in none mode or no op mode, right? Which essentially is I do nothing and the BA has to do everything. That's essentially what the prereq wants, right? It wants to plan a nothing and then change the state of its one thing that it cares about or however many there are with the prereqs. I, I, I don't know if, you, I remember you talking about changing that. Um, that's, I mean, that's theoretically true. That would work, but you still would have a special case where if request state is none and overall action is none, then ignore the cache always. Yeah, no, it's it's none. It's it's basically skip everything until the BA says do something. Yeah. That's yeah, that's what you're asking for, but it's I mean you'd still have to have a special condition somewhere saying Yeah, the overall action is none and the BA didn't ask for us to do anything, then we need to skip the always. Cool. If the action is none, then we ignore the always, unless the BA does something to that package. Right? None essentially says, do nothing to all of the packages. I mean, that's much better than exposing skip to each package. It's essentially saying, look, I want you to run a plan and do nothing by default, and I will control everything myself. It's what the I'm really confused. Why can't we do that today with a request state of none? Because it will still that... do cache equals always for you. It'll calculate. Your... Oh, okay. you declared right. cache equals always. Let me go cache that for you. You're like, well, <sighs> right. yes, but not right. That's why the action none appeals to me so much. Well, we have action unknown. That would be an error if you pass that. Really? Or it, it should be. <laughs> <laughs> it okay. It will blow up somewhere. Maybe not the place where it should blow up. <laughs> I love That's it. fair. And terribly exciting. <laughs> I don't. The more I I I go through this scenario, that more that makes sense to me, and the more generally applicable it is. It's basically here, plan nothing, which is like so Burns gonna be like, I'll do nothing and I'll just let you decide what to do for each package. And then the BA gets the complete control over what they want. It turns off all the behaviors, all the auto behaviors, and just says, Here you go, BA. Do the right thing. I mean I, I would rather have the force cache. I don't want force cat. It doesn't describe the. Well, at that point, you want to turn off caching, right? Yeah, it. Yeah. So it's the opposite of. Yeah, it's force not force cache. cache. It's force uncache. It it's ignore cache equals always. It's letting the BA opt in to cache equals always conditionally, and it's also letting the prereq BA opt out of it. 
Right, that's a tertiary, it's a three-way thing. Force cache has to be a three-way. Do the default, don't, cache always, yes, cache always. Well, I mean, not really. The engine can say, yeah, I'm going to force cache because of cache always, mm -hmm. and then the BA can set that to false. Gotcha. And then changing it from false to true will only work if the package will actually be cached or not. At, at that point, I'd rather the BA be able to, you know, set the final cache state, <laughs> which is where I started. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they are, aren't they? Oh, no. No, they're not. Wait, they are. Well, I, I guess are it depends on how, sorry, it depends on how you interpret the force cache. I mean... You could interpret the cat, the force cat, or the cache as just a boolean at that point. No, you can't, because you're right, because you want to calculate based off of the requested state too, right? So it is still force cache. But you could say force cache no to force it to not get cache. Wait, but it's a boolean. Force cache no. Force cache will be. True, so, if cache equals always. And force cat, and then the BA changes the force cache, changes it to false. And then normal caching rules apply. Right. And then normal caching, right? So it still could get cached even though you said don't force cache it. Right. And that that's just okay. like. <laughs> well, no, the the English works out though. So that's it does. Okay. The, the English does work out. Absolutely, the English does work out. It's just as a BA, you're like, but I wanted the control. And all I've got here is a partial control, and the partial control I have exists for the prereq BA. Yeah, I mean, no one has, has asked for to conditionally opt in to always. Or opt out. Although that's kind of what this original issue was about, was I want to conditionally opt in to always. <laughs> I want to be able to force cache a package. You want to Whether be able it's... to opt out of always. That's really what it is. The, the prereq BA wants to opt out. Yep. This original issue, 5125, wanted to opt in. <laughs> wanted to opt in? Interesting. So, I mean, if we want to do the skip, I mean, that, that works. It's just not as still not exposing the BA to configure the always, to override the always. It's just letting the BA yeah. opt out of always by doing a special action. Yeah. So you can force cache anything then. And you cannot force cache anything, but you cannot prevent the thing from still getting cached if cache equals yes. It's interesting. Cache equals yes becomes the thing you can't change. Yes. <laughs> Which is part of why what I was proposing was perhaps moving always into something else. We're moving the cache equals to no equal to a separate setting. I'm beginning to see why you mentioned clean cache as well. Because again, we're, we're, we're talking about the end state, not the beginning state. Yeah, this is all about end state. Cannot opt out of cash equals yes. You can opt in on cash equals no. That's interesting. <laughs> so 
So the way to give the BA complete control is to mark everything cash equals no, and then use this force to change it. That's the way you could, the BA could control. Mm -hmm. That's the way the BA could get full control over caching. I wasn't intending. The force cache is about acquiring the package. It's not about whether it keeps it. Mm -hmm. ah. So if cash, if cash right. equals no, and you force you set force cash equals to true, and the B engine's not doing anything on the package, it's not going to acquire the package because there's no point. Someone's gonna file a bug on that. <laughs> Well, if you said cash equals no and you said force cash equals true, what would that get? Uh, the force cash would be ignored if cash equals no. In all <sighs> cases. Yeah, see, that's that's the. It's just always. You're just controlling always. And if we break out always to a separate bit, then what? Yes, no. So then you could, it's one of those, yeah, it's like you can't set always if you set cash equals no. Right? Cash equals no and always cash equals true is a nonsense state, which is why we didn't split them in the separate attributes to start. I tried, I initially split them, and then my code review said, Put them together. Yeah, because it's not, they're not independent. Because you can't say cash equals no and always equals yes. That, that, that's, an, that's an invalid state. We try to avoid the language putting you into those. That's why we have yes, no, yes, always. Even though I'm not thrilled with the yes, no, and another piece, but it was a backs compatible change at that point. I mean, really, yes and always go together. And then whether to keep the package in the cache at the end of apply is a separate option. Uh, it's what? it's trying to decide. It's trying to decide when yes and always is kind of about when to. Always is about acquiring the package. No is about keeping the package in the cache. It really is two separate concepts. I, I don't agree. Always is about having the thing end up in the cache, even if you didn't install it. Yes, you have to go to acquisition. I mean, all of them require you to go to acquisition to get to the end state. But acquisition is a is an intermediate. You go through acquisition if we need the package in the cache for any reason, whether we're going to keep it cached or not. Well, I mean, as far as the engine's concerned, it's two operations, acquisition yep. and yep. clean. Yep, right. And that's why they're different operations. Right. You may acquire things that do or do not get cleaned. But, right, the engine will acquire things that it knows it's going to need. The question is, what's the end state? We don't expose to the BA to say, hey, do you want to acquire this or not? Because all they can do is get that wrong. We just say, do you want to keep this after we chose to get it or not? And sometimes we make decisions for them. And we didn't bother to get this, so we're not going to bother. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that's what we're, it's all about whether you're going to keep it at the end. But the always is where to, whether to get in the first place. No. No, the always is whether to keep it in the cache, even though it wasn't installed. Put it in the cache, even though I didn't install it. That's what it, in, in the end, means. I didn't put it on the machine, but I want it in the cache. Do that. Okay. 
Burn will leave it in the cache for you. It's it's just about whether you're looking at it from you know the going into it or the going out of it. I mean, it, on uninstall, the end state is not the package is cached. No, the bundle should ideally remove all remnants of itself on uninstall. So always, this, <laughs> that's why I keep on pushing for it's about acquiring the package. And it implies that the package should be cached, kept in the cache, if the engine decides it should be. Oh, okay. I don't, the, yeah, I don't have a scenario in my brain where there is a, I want to keep a package in the cache, even though I've removed the bundle that uses it. That that state doesn't exist yet. That'd be like permanent, right? It's like cache permanently. Yeah. And we don't have that state today. And again, if we did, I would still look at it in terms of what's the end result. I want this to be cached even <laughs> after I've removed the bundle. And we don't expose that today. I, I, have people asked? That's not. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't really want to either. Um, that's not a scenario I want to encourage by any means. I mean, permanent packages will, will stay cached. They stay cached. I was th I was thinking they probably did because they don't have a way of knowing when they can clean up their bits if you want to repair them. Um, but that's just that's a toss up. It's like I don't like that we leave them behind because we also. Yeah, I remember this debate because I also was trying to figure out could we write a custom action that you could put inside MSIs that would end up self-deleting their caches that Burn gave them so that if they were permanent, they could still get themselves cleaned up out of the cache. And then, of course, then the hit that you know permanent MSIs are not that common. The more common things are Xs. And then the whole world comes crashing down on, well, then you probably shouldn't cache Xs, which then means you can't mark them for repair, and then you know you shouldn't, sorry, you shouldn't cache permanent Xs, which then means you shouldn't mark them for repair, and then we end up with the whole net effects thing. Um, logical states. Um, so the force cache just overrides always then if you're if you're saying that cuz then yeah cuz if smart cache equals no and i say force cache it's going to ignore it why ignore it why not just say okay fine i'll cache it for you I mean, <laughs> so I guess weird. we could. It's just so weird. It's like, hey, this is cash equals no, force cash. So. I, mean, I don't see the point. But yeah, so I mean, when do you could. ever, who changes this? Anybody that wants to make sure this thing is on the machine, stays on the machine. Yeah, it gets interesting. If I'm a BA and I'm trying to make this scenario that was listed in this bug, then I want to say, oh, this package is installed, and I wanted it to have been cached, so I would say force cache equals true. Yeah. And because it was cache equals yes, it would actually do it. And if it was cache equals no, then it would ignore it unless I really wanted to force it to cache it. Yeah, so it's force cache if caching <laughs> is really what it is. Okay, its full name is that. That's a very long, annoying name. I'm really struggling here. <laughs> this is so hard.
Bob, do you have any gut feeling based off the bundles, the VAs that you've written? Like, zero of which have been managed code, so... Oh, this isn't managed code. Right, but... You were talking primarily about the, the prereq BA, right? Well, yeah, um, well, we have to get the behavior right in the prereq BA. I'm trying to think of this. If you, if you see F-Force Cache, right, and using it... Well, I mean, I, one thing I saw yesterday was there's like a payload complete event that we have with the retry action. I mean, if you set it to retry and it was successful, then it's not going to retry. I mean, we already have things where we just ignore what the BA asks for if it doesn't apply in the scenario. Yeah, yeah, no, that that's true. I'm just, I'm getting to the, but it says force cache. And you're like, yeah, yeah, great, force cache it, even though I said no. And then it says, no, you can't force cache something you said no on. And you're like, well, then it's not really force cache. It's just always cache it. You know, that that's the, the thing I'm just struggling with, right? The fact that the VA is not getting the control. It's, it's We can certainly do that. It's just I'm trying to think, what are people going to do? And is there ever a case where you say cache equals no, and suddenly in the VA you want to change your mind? Um, well, so that's just a naming problem. Is the concept sound? If the concept sound, we can come up with, you know, right. a if name. I guess where I'm getting, and it might be the opposite of, of force, but right. whatever. I guess where I'm at is the the thing I'm charting with is that scenario that is a a scenario that I have seen discussed. I don't know that anybody's ever wanted it, but the ability to give the user the option, say, hey, do you want us to leave your cash behind? so that you'll have a better experience should you need repairs and things like that? Or do you want your disk space back? Which right. would okay, allow so the BA to then say, basically change it from yes to no. Visual Studio does this, right? Some, okay. I th okay, they do. They're, they're in the 2019 installer, there's a checkbox that right. is, and I don't remember if they say clean or leave, but um, yeah, they, they have the option there to clean up or not clean up the cache. Right. That scenario. That if we're if we're going to allow them to override the caching, then that's that. It's like then it's right there. It's that same thing. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm always in the engine, but it just doesn't make sense to me to combine those two things. To combine what acquisition two and keeping are just two separate things. Yeah, look, my point is that from a BA's point of view, acquisition is never involved. It, it's not an option. It's not something that you can think about. They don't get but control. But it's exactly <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but what I that that my point is that from a BA, you don't think about the that you you got to think about what do I want in the cache in the end. And the engine goes through. I, I understand the engine has to make those. I guess that's why I was saying the engine makes those decisions today of whether you go through acquisition or not. Because it's all based on the package state and the request state. Right, and the type of package and all those kinds of things, right. The BA can't, we, we've not exposed, the BA does not get to decide whether we're gonna go get something or not. Technically, the BA doesn't even get to decide whether you're going to install something or not. That's true. It's, it's, all, it's all computed. Correct. So this is about the ability to control the end state of the package cache. And right now it's purely declarative. And if we're going to let the BA override part of it, because that's what the prereq BA needs, and the bug is about allowing things that were not cached to be cached, then should we also f do the other one, which Visual Studio 2019 has a scenario, of the, well then let them let the BA say, I would like this to not end up in the cache in the end. So I would rather create a brand new action for that, cleaning your cache, than creating a special case action for the prereq BA. But I don't, but a, but a BA is going to want to go through, because they're going to have a checkbox in the UI, they're going to get the callbacks. 
they're not going to want to say, all right, I'm going to plan an install, and then at the end of the install and all those progress bars, I'm going to go through and do another clean action and build up another progress bar. Like that's harder to do in the BA to do two to do multiple actions is harder in a BA. It's, it's just I mean, you don't have to. You already ran everything. You don't have to show UI to do it. You can. Just well, you might because it. it might be big. You're going to need to show progress because it might take a while. Does the user really care? They do, if the install's still running, I mean, you could say, hey, let's hide the UI and let the install continue to delete stuff, but, and then the user shuts down the computer. I, it, it's just, I hear you, but in the end, all these disk operations generally need to be able to be routed up to, to, to progress. So that's why I'm hesitant to add additional actions to uh, do the, the cache cleaning um, versus the, well, let's just override the cache state at that point. Um, overriding the cache state and saying, leaving the state if the, basically having the, the prereq BA mat says the request state matches the current state of the package, right? That's essentially what it does, except for the one that it wants to install. That's the way it avoids having any operation hitting any package. And then it's a matter of getting the, the cache right. Yep. So if it said cache equals no on, yeah, you see, then it, it can't do, you don't want to do cache equals no on everything because then it's going to remove the cache potentially on a bunch of things that it should have left it on. And that's where that extra complication comes in. The VA having to be involved in knowing, oh, it's already cached, so don't say cache equals no. Um, the prereq VA has to say, ah, it's already cached, don't say cache equals no. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I understand, like, the scenario that you laid it out optimizes it for the prereq VA and enables the bug but leaves out this other scenario that I think is a real scenario and we have the opportunity to do it here if we put the design in correct, even if it makes the prereq BA harder, it probably makes what most people would do in their UIs if they have the leave cache or clean up cache checkbox easier from a BA point of view. I mean, I guess if you want to do all three, then we should just have the bundle track the cache equals no, yes, or always, and just let them change it on the fly. Right. That's essentially what's happening. Oh, you're saying return that state? Cache equals no, yes, always. Yeah. It's the same. You're right. Yeah. It, but in the end, yes, no, and always, yes and always, as you noted, turns into a Boolean in the end, right? always just changes the way that you determine true. I mean, that was your point earlier as well, that in the end, it's a Boolean, right? Do you want to keep the cache or not? It's, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not? Because the prereq BA will just set it to yes if it's always, because it needs the engine not to use the always functionality. No, the prereq BA is going to have to set it to no it, in the end, it's, it's going to set to yes, so that if it's already cached, it'll stay in the cache. If it's not cached, it's not going to do anything. Oh, I see. you you want to continue to hand the engine to do the calculation as opposed to having the PA do the calculation. I yeah. see. So then, I, I, I see what you're saying. So it could be right. Um, so another way we could have solved this, and we didn't solve it this way way back when for backs compatibility, pro, I think, but instead of yes, no, always, or it, no, yes, always, it's really no if required, always, if needed, right? The yes one is the one that's basically saying, if you need it, cache it. If you don't need it, don't cache it. Don't keep it cached. That's what that yes state is, right? 
Yeah. Because that's all based on the action of the package. And that's based off of the the calculated action state of the package, right? Yep. So yes is, you know, whatever the action says, essentially. Yep. Okay. Um, that makes sense to me, too. That's another... That makes sense, too, is the ability for the engine to override what the manifest said. Or, the, sorry, the BA to override what the manifest said. As opposed to having to recreate the logic at their level to know the difference between no, yes, and always. Yep. So the prereq BA in that scenario would say no to everything. Oh, no, you say it would say yes to everything. It, would, uh, it could say yes to everything. It, and it would change off. always to yes. Right. It would just say yes to everything. No. It no. would change always to yes. And that's it. Okay. You're right, because that would avoid marking its own thing that's going to install from no to yes. Right. So it, it could, it could always, you're right, it would say, yeah, always? Nah, not always. <laughs> Only if you need it. And then let that roll through. Yeah. Yep, that keeps the all the logic which already exists inside the engine and the BA then can just override, you know, the things that it already had to know about, that the developer already had to know about in the way that they authored the manifest. Yep. Yep. That works well, too. Of course, if we keep that in the state file and then they clean their package cache. Do you have to survive? Wait. Does it have to survive restarts? Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Remember the new functionality I to clean. added? So the bundle knows whether to say registered or not. Yeah. Needs to know right. whether to ignore the cache or not. Okay, but all right. This is yeah. So let me let me catch up to this one because this is newer stuff that I don't have the deeply buried in parts of my brain. So the prereq BA is going to do its thing and maybe restart, come back, and it's going to be all, it's going to have a whole new world at that point. So that's not the scenario because it has to recalculate the plan from there. Um, the, the normal BA would kick in and it would calculate its plan normally. So where's the problem scenario? If you have a force restart in the middle of your normal bundle, So, let's see. I'm trying to think of a scenario. I mean, it's kind of a convoluted scenario. But if your bundle is installed All right. and you decided that cache should be yes for all packages and you, you overrode that, or no. Okay, so the manifest says yes for all packages. You okay. overread to say no. In the BA. Now. The BA now, overrides the, to no? Yeah. Okay. You persist that in a file in the package cache. You clean the package cache. Yeah, but why do we need to persist it? Uh, so then another bundle comes along and installs a shared package. So now it's cached. So you run the bundle. So th the fact that that package is cached means that that bundle is not going to uninstall automatically. Even though the BA overrode it and said, I don't want any of my packages in the cache. Okay, I'm, I'm, okay so... The BA overriding it is, it has to do that every time. It doesn't get to remember that state. Like, if a BA said, you know, if the user checked the box and said, clean my cache out, then it, you know, Burn's not going to remember that state. The next time you come up and run, right, Burn's not going to do anything 
to help the BA know that the user checked that box. The BA may choose to do that, but Burn itself is, shouldn't do anything there. The engine shouldn't do anything there. I mean, I guess that would work. Yeah, do that one simple. <laughs> I'm waiting for it to all come crashing down again. And Bob's gone to sleep on us. Huh? What? <laughs> would would we at least persist it while it's still running? Persist it while so, it's running. Let's say they do an install operation, and for some reason the BA ran detect again and started doing other things. Should what they chose during the previous apply cycle affect whether the engine decides whether to keep I, I, I wouldn't it, it, it truly is a in moment in time during the planning it lasts just for that long to make the plan whatever they want and nothing else in the engine I mean the engine doesn't remember that this, just like the engine doesn't remember that you chose to override the install state of a package the engine doesn't remember that it logs it. Just it logs sure. it. There's, there's no blame. Absolutely should log it. <laughs> but the engine otherwise should not remember. Because, you know, we should not get played. Hey, all, none of my stuff is ever getting cached. You look at the logs, it's like, yeah, your BA is telling it to not cache anything. Success. We did what you said. And then they can go off and fix it. Um, but, yeah, the engine should not remember any of that stuff. It's It's no more than it remembers the install state of an action during the plan. It's like, yeah, no, I wrote it to the plan, and it can move on with the rest of its decision-making from that point. Yeah, that works. So if it's not force cache, it's just, it's whatever the standard behavior is, right? Here's the default. Here's what it was in the manifest. You can change it if you want. Right. And then you're going to get in the code and tell us that we can't make that decision that late, which I'm afraid of, but I hope that it's early enough that it'll work. Well, no, you're you're deciding something that's declarative. <laughs> like you're you're overriding the it's declarative. It's independent. Yeah. yeah, you are overriding the declarative, and I'm hoping that yeah, when we make that typical callback, I'm hoping it fits into an existing call the the existing plan callback. I guess. It's just the timing. I don't remember the timing in burn. I'm hoping, like, yeah, there's no problem. Just slots right here. It's it's just like you get to override. Well, it's not the same. You're overriding what's declared in the manifest for caching. That's what we're exposing here. And I think that will enable all the scenarios not terribly. I'm, I was going to say, well, I think it works right. It should work in non-planned package begin. Okay, great. Well, that's relatively straightforward then. It's like, here's the value. Give me back the value. If it doesn't match, well, I just log whatever the BA, just add it to the logging and then do the normal math. So it's hopefully a very localized change. Oh, no, except to change at the interface. So it's going to be breaking all over the place for that. But yeah. I mean, norm as normal, the hard part is naming. <laughs> Are we keeping no, yes, always? Yeah. Bob? Sorry, that time I was asleep. Um, <laughs> I, I really think we should replace yes, and I will write the converter code to convert yes if we come up with a better word. Because the fact that it created confusion among us makes me think. But I don't like two words. I want a single word attribute if possible. Yeah. If required um, is bad. But 
is it not accurate? Yeah, if needed, you know. Um, I, I want a single word for if necessary. Okay, sure, no problem. I need a um, thesaurus for multi words and the single words. <laughs> well, German. Okay. Well, let, <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> yes, yeah, German. They're single words. <laughs> um, okay, well, so, so what about catch equals no? Okay. That's everyone's confused by that. Okay. So is this saying that we should come up with all new words? I'm, maybe I'm not against that either. Booleans? I'm not against the we have three, right? And it's all about the end state of the cache. Okay. Right? So um, I, yeah, I have okay. no, like if we're changing one word, changing two words is just as easy. Or it's twice as much work, but okay. Uh, it, once I, once you're writing the converter code, which is where most of this right, is at, right. it's not that big a deal. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about I will take an issue or the action item, I suppose, to see if I can come up with new words. All right. Bob is done I can with tell this you meeting. My my brain. Yeah, my brain is not set for for wordage at the moment. Um, I think if we get the right words, Sean, then you have the enums, and then it will all just hold together, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I kind of like my transient default and always. Transient default always. Yeah, something in that direction. Not a huge fan of transient. I'm not either, because it's kind of, it's like temporary, but that's not quite right either. Um, but yes. I'd also like to get rid of default. Yeah. Since that requires a separate lookup to see what the hell the default behavior is. Yeah. Well, are you going to document what the engine is doing? Well, we have to document the attribute so when someone picks it in the code, they know what to say. So yeah, so I mean, we'll document that for sure. I mean, I, I don't know how you're going to encode in one word all the logic that goes into the engine about whether when it caches. Well, if you just squeeze the the words together, they become one word. <laughs> German. Fine. German. I will go. I will go. No. <laughs> no. Unless the word is Uber. Uh, no. I don't even know if sure that Uber is a word in German by itself. I don't know German. So. No do I, which will complicate this approach. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I like the idea of uh, not encoding the logic in the engine, but encoding the, the result. This is what the cache looks like at the end. That's where you know, cache equals no is, is wrong. Well, it's accurate, but it's confusing. Um, Transient describes it, maybe. I just don't like the word. Um, so anyway, uh, I'll see. I'll see if the brain works on the words. I used to be able to do that. So just not right now. All right. Yeah, definitely. All right. We are definitely not going to the other item, which is numbered wrong anyway. So. I'm going to skip right past that, and since I think we have successfully chased everybody off, um, I expect there's no questions or comments at this point. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. All right. Um, I think I have enough work, once again, to keep me busy. Oh, bummer. Our next meeting is on April 1st. <laughs> that could be fun. Yeah. Um, if I somehow get through all of my stuff faster, which is possible if the bugs are shallow, um, then I may ask for one of these for my things. I need input on, again, it's mostly naming and wording and getting people to understand it, but, um, sorry, what, what are you pointing at? The, the, the issue that I have, the, the, um, inline director syntax, nested inline, um, child elements in inline director syntax. Oh. The other discussion. Item. Yeah, the thing that's on my brain of the other big one that I have to get right. Um, 
the language design of it. And I have several different options, and I don't know how to pick amongst them at this point. Which means go for the collective, everybody in, and then see where we end up. So um, on that note, I think we'll be back in two weeks unless something happens on that one. Look for a special meeting if that happens. But I have enough bugs that I expect I'm probably not going to get done early in the next week to get to that thing anyway. So um, two weeks, we'll be back. We'll assume that April 1st. That'll be a fun one. And uh, we will do something like this, probably a lot like this, although I don't think this will I don't know. I was going to say it's going to be less contentious, but it's going to be. Uh, how do we want to do this thing? This was the easy one. This was the easy one? No, no, no. I didn't think this one was easy, which is why oh. I never got around to entering the email. Um, All right. So, Well, I didn't think it was two hours yeah. hard, but. That's. Uh, caching is. Yeah. Isn't there something about caching being a hard problem? Caching being. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't it one of the hard problems? Naming, versioning, cache? Anyway, um, two weeks from now, we'll be back. Uh, ponder on how hard caching really can be while we go and fix more Wix 4 bugs. If you want to jump in this, hey, some people have been joining us. That's been fun. It's been nice to see some, a couple um, new faces kind of fixing things. So that's also very cool. Thank you for those of you that are doing that at the end of this two-hour meeting. Um, two and a half-hour meeting. So uh, until two weeks from now, you guys take it easy. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.